And I told my cousin, like, oh, yeah, I think I might start streaming. Like, I might just start, like, buying stuff. And he was like, nah, like, you always say you're going to do it and you never do it. And I kind of, and I, I took that personally, dude. I took that personally. I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to actually do it. So I, I, I spent the money. I bought a PC. I bought, you know, my monitors. I had my PS5 at the time. I already, like, I already had that. So, like, I bought my Elgato. I bought everything. Like, spent a lot of money. And I was like, I already spent this money, so now I have to do it. Like, there's no point in spending all this money. Like, now I'm committed. I'm super excited to bring another special guest onto the show today. I'll tee him up with a great intro in just one second. But before I do, as always, guys, you already know, if you haven't done so already, like the video down below, subscribe to the channel. We are growing. We're a brand new show trying to grow a true culture around the beautiful games here in the United States and in broader North America. But we can't do that without your help. So again, hit that like button, hit smash that subscribe button and uh, be a part of the movement. Now, with that said, uh, uh, box to box is presented by Goals.TV. Goals TV, where you can get your free, unlimited fan-made footy content today. For more info and for more content there, head to Goals.TV now. All right, got that intro out of the way. Now, on to our guest. He is a Twitch streamer extraordinaire, massive footy fan, massive Chicago Fire fan, and wants to see MLS grow like m- many of us here in the States do. Uh, I'm so excited that he's here. We've been talking about doing this pod for a while now, and uh, I'm just glad we're finally doing it. John Rivera on the show today. My man, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How you good? How you doing? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm glad we're doing this. I think I think we have a lot to kind of uh, you know, unpack here when it comes to your story, your fandom around the beautiful game, how you were brought in and everything you're working on right now as a content creator. So um, we'll dive into all of those things, but you already know what question's coming. Our audience already <laughs> knows what question's coming. Uh, it's a little bit deeper, but I think it's a, it's a great way to kick off the show. John, who are you today, man? I think that's a good question. I think it's interesting because um, it could be taken into many different avenues, I guess, with the question. But oh, I yeah. think who I, who I am today um, is kind of a reflection of how I've grown up in development of like everything that I've been through with whether it, it's in football or in life in general, I think it's just an evolution of that. And I yeah. just want to continue striving to become a better person every day. I think as many of us do. Um, but I feel like I'm just trying to be as helpful as possible in many avenues as I can. And uh, along with that, like I feel like content creation is one of the ways that I can help not only develop the game, but also like help just people in general. I think that's one of the, number one things that I try to do with my content and just my, my streams in general. And on top of that, be entertaining as hell, bro. I mean, yeah. in all yeah. honesty, your, your streams are great. Um, and you're doing a lot, not just through your content, right. But I would say even on the community building front, everything you want to kind of yeah. put together, not just online, but in real life. And I'm kind of teasing up, you know, a few topics that we'll talk about later on in the show, but I think you're doing a lot of crazy good things for uh, the FIFA community, especially here in North America. Um, and there's, there's, you know, if people haven't taken notice of what you're doing with, you know, footy summer, your Twitch streams, everything in between, I think they're definitely going to start noticing here pretty soon. Uh, but we'll talk about it. I don't want to tease it up too much. We'll talk about it later in the show. Um, but as we typically do on Box to Box, I want to start with your journey today uh, at the very beginning, man. Uh, I think in all honesty, you know, you and I are both Hispanic, Mexican American. Um, there's a lot, uh, I think, probably respectively on both sides of us here. Um, of lineage when it comes to the fandom that we have, right? With this yeah. game, so many different angles we can look at it from. Um, but let's start at the beginning, right? Um, talking about you as a fan, let's put you know the Twitch content creation career aside for a second. How were you brought into this game? What are your earliest memories of soccer or football? I think my earliest memories, honestly, it was like just growing up, going to the park Sunday league with my dad. Honestly, that's what it was. Like, um, like Sunday league, like we would. I think it was like my brother, my sister. Uh, my mom and my dad, every time my dad would go play Sunday league, like it was our local league here in, in the town that I live in. Um, but in Wisconsin, it's not really like soccer is like big, but it's not like it's known, but it's kind of like, you know, off to the side. Like we don't really have a professional sports team here. You know, obviously we have, um, you know, now we have uh, uh, Ford Madison and the USL, uh, I think they're in league one. Um, yeah. But yeah, like we have Forward Madison, but that's really about it. Like we don't really have anything like professionally that people kind of like gravitate to. And yeah. I think that like I think my earliest days was just like honestly it was just that like going on Sundays like after church we'd go you know either it was before church or after church we'd go watch my dad play and like I think little kids you know 
like I think I took to it because like, you know, as a child, you know, you you tend to look up to your parents, you know, and I looked up a lot to my dad. That was something that like I always uh, took from him was like his big fandom of, of, of what football is, you know, and everything. So like we'd go every Sunday, we'd go play in the park, you know, I'd be playing with my, my younger cousins, like just kicking the ball around, you know, just like yep. being around it. Like I don't remember very much paying attention to what, you know, how he was playing or anything like that. It wasn't really like that. It was more like just being around that environment. And it would be like, after that, you know, we'd go to my grandma's house and then we'd, we'd watch, uh, you know, the Mexican league at the time. So like at the time, like Leon wasn't in the, in the first division. I think we, we got relegated like earlier. It was like really like a long, long time ago. So they hadn't been successful. And so they hadn't been promoted for a long, long time. So I remember just like watching like multiple different thing, teams. Like I was watching like Chivas, uh, Santos was a big one for a time. And like, we always, we disliked America. That's for sure. Like that's well, the one thing, <laughs> the one thing that always like was number one in our family, like support anyone else, but you can't support America. That's the, that's the biggest I, thing. I, I, who, who likes America, bro? Like, no, I, I mean, I don't there's, know. There's a know. couple people in my chat that I know that, that <laughs> love America. And they're always like, why do you hate America? You're not even like a rival fan. Like your team's not a rival, but it's like, Nah, dude. Like, I don't like them. Like, I just there's this whole essence about them that I just don't like. And that was it started when I was younger. Honestly, that, that's that's the whole essence of it. Was like my family just didn't like you know America at all. Like, it was like, yeah, we're not direct rivals, but we just don't like who they are. And like that was one of the things. It's like they we didn't like that. So like we supported Chivas for a bit while that one was you know getting up. Obviously, then you know. I started playing like a little bit when I was younger, but I never really got into like the, like the, you know, like the, like we played rec for a while and that was cool. But like, I would always just like, like it was Sundays, go watch, you know, watch the Mexican league, well, you know, watch Mexico play. Yeah. And it was like, that's what the, you know, what we revolved around. So that's how I kind of got introduced into everything later on. Like my dad was the one that actually introduced me into FIFA. So that was kind of how I, got in more into the game and I started learning a little bit about different other clubs. So it was like, it's not only that, but it's just, I just fell in love with the game because my dad like really liked it. So that's, that's kind of where it, like it all kind of started. I like so that. It was bro. really more like that. Yeah, no, man, that's crazy. And like, you know, I feel like it's pretty, a pretty similar path to where I feel like a lot of, of, I mean, you know, kids at our age back then were kind of going through, right. I don't know when FIFA came into the mix for everybody, but the fact that your dad was this massive inspiration, you kind of flock to some of the same teams and leagues that yeah. you followed. Um, I think that's a lot of uh, uh, the path for for so many fans. Um, going back to the America point, uh, I think it's really interesting, right? Like you mentioned, you, you weren't a direct rival fan. Um, you know, I mean, Leon, yeah, they were in a, in, a, in a second division. Chivas were probably the most direct rival fans yeah. in that fan base. Um but you know, I I remember listening to my deals back in the day, like argue crazy argue, like <laughs> a, like, a, like at cookouts or, or barbecues, right? At, at, at America versus Chivas, this and that, and um, and you know, I always saw. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't disagree. You know, disagree, but I always saw comparisons. I would always draw comparisons to, to yeah. other leagues, other teams. I would always see America to me as like if I had to compare them to America and Chivas to two teams, it would be to like. Barcelona, Real Madrid. Yeah, and honestly, at that level, that, yeah, honestly. Yeah, but America being like this, you know, the Galacticos power that, you know, brings in all these foreign players. They don't develop their own in-house talent. You know, they, they're they big stars. They have a lot of championships they've won over the years, right? Um, but, you know, sometimes would get those stars that are just so easy to yeah. dislike, right? Like, yeah. I remember watching Cuatemo Blanco and be like, bro, I can't stand this dude, man. Like, I just can't. The celebration? Like, everything, bro. It's like his personality. And on top of it off, like, he didn't even look like he was, I mean, he was a he was a baller at times, but like, he just yeah. didn't look like he was super athletic, bro. It, it was just a bunch of things that I, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I would rub me and a lot of people probably the wrong way, but I had people in my family who heavily backed America, even trying to put you know, Aguilas jerseys on me as a kid. <laughs> just like, no, but, but, and then you have Chivas, right. Who doesn't, you know, does things almost the exact opposite yeah. way. Um, and, and so, you know, they, they do it a, a little more Barcelona esque in the sense that they, they, they prioritize players from Mexico. They, they're very big on their Academy and, yeah. um, and they're okay with playing their own brand of football. So I don't know when we think about, I feel like Liga IMX doesn't get a ton of love here, which is why I wanted to, to kind of, you know, bring him up a little bit, you know, um, MLS, everyone's so rah, 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 trying to grow the league. But the biggest part of our fan base is Hispanic. When you think about, you know, your support for Club Leon, 
you, you know, you mentioned, you know, not liking America. I mean, how big of, of an impact did Liga IMX just in general have, not just on you, but your family and how you guys thought about football? No, it was huge because that that was the first it was the first league that I was really introduced like introduced to. So like for me, it was like it was the only thing that I knew at the time, like when I'm being younger, like it was the only thing that I I, I knew there was football outside of it because I obviously knew Barcelona and Real Madrid. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I didn't know anything else. Like it wasn't like I was introduced into any other like the Premier League or anything, because I think at the time, I don't, I don't, it was like, we didn't really just, have, we didn't really didn't have the channel for it. Like we didn't, we rarely watched it. So it was one of the things where it's like, it wasn't, ex, it wasn't exposed to me. So it was one of the things where like, that's all I really knew was this, like the Mexican league. And like, I knew MLS was a thing, but like, I didn't really follow the league because who do you support? You know, none of my family like grew up on MLS. And I think now, like I, since I started supporting the fire, like, We've, I've taken my family to a couple games and, you know, they're exposed to it a little bit more now, but it's not something where they're like completely impassioned about because they just don't support any of the team. So it's like, sure, it's, sure. it's a big part of like, I think the culture of like everyone that immigrates, you know, from Mexico to the U S like that's a lot of people's, you know, not only personalities, but that's just what they grew up on. Like, so they, you continue the culture, you know, through your parents, your grandparents, you know, and most of us from like, you know, in, in the States that grew up here, we end up supporting either the same clubs or we just watch the same leagues because that's what we're exposed to. Like it's, it's I don't think it's a thing where it's like, you're just kind of, you don't, you don't just kind of find it. You're kind of grown into it. So like, you, yeah, yeah, you figure out, you know, who, who to support and stuff like that. And I think like when it comes to like a lot of the rivalries that you have or with, with like a lot of the clubs, it, it honestly, that's where it stems from. It's just, you know, family backgrounds. And I think like people from other countries can relate to that because in England, you know, you either you support your local team or, you know, because your grandfather, you know, your dad's dad, you know, whatever, like they all, it's a lineage. And I think you continue that here uh, within the U.S. in the conf- in the confines of like League I Makeys and stuff like that. So, yeah, like, yeah, that's honestly bro. where it comes from. Yeah. And that's and that's that's, well, it's, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Right. And the reason I'm asking you that question is because I so often see MLS fans, right, uh, almost panic a little bit at the sign of uh, maybe the, the league not growing as fast as they want it to grow, um, comparing it to other leagues across the world, even just you know, right here across the border with the guy MX, there's, there's so much what you just said right there. There's so much influence that comes from the foundation that's already been laid, right? Um, our parents and our families, our, our grandparents, our great grandparents, they all have spent a ton of time supporting these leagues, and these clubs that, you know, it's, it's influenced us, right. As this new generation, as generation Y and generation Z, um and and that's that's massive and it's it doesn't it doesn't get talked about that much and i'm I'm bringing it up because with mls now you know there's the apple tv deal the growth of the league worldwide you know people are are speculating on how many paid subscriptions apple tv has sold to bring the mls to multiple countries around the world and the first thing that most people kind of start to harp on is you know when maybe projections don't meet the you know uh, or the numbers don't meet the projections that were originally put out there is oh mls is never going to grow past what it is it's never going to become a top three or top two sports league in, the, in north america and my response oh go ahead i think what people generally forget is that the league's not even i don't know like and it's not it's not 40 years old yet like we it's yeah. a it's a it's honestly the the league is very new and i think the league has gone through a lot of transitions when it comes to like just the formats of it when it comes to either playoffs uh like even the pen- the iconic penalty shootouts that they used to have back in the day um in like the, the hockey up. style ones yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the like like i think people just genuinely forget that like the league has evolved in a like very different way because you know you had to start and then you know you have your middle ground where it was a lot of retired players a lot of big names it was associated with the oh this is just a retirement league you know it's not like a league where people go and develop and now i think today what it's become and it's like you got a lot of young players in the league you know you got your uh your Diego Almadas you know your you know the, the you know your Gabriel Salinas like, there's multiple different players that you can list that you just you see them and you, you know that they're developing young players and they're shipping them out like the fire we just i think we made it over i think i think it was 30 30 mil on two like under 20 under 20 players like yep that were just exported into the Premier League. Like, that is a thing where it's like you're showing growth in different ways. And I think people just have to be patient and remember that, like, just because the league isn't, like, top five in the world, I don't think it's ever going to get to that point. But I think 
if you know you're not going to get to that point, you have to develop the league in a point where it's like you have to have some sort of identity. And I think the MLS is now developing that. And before it, it didn't have that, but because the league was so young. And I think even like even even league I make is to the point where they're getting worried they're going to get overtaken by MLS. So it's like it's going both ways. Like you see it in you know on on the Mexican sports channels. You know you watch it, the channels from Mexico and you you hear it all the time. Like all the Spanish TV shows talk about how is is MLS is U.S. soccer overtaking Mexico and they have this big sort of pride on that. And it's like yeah, it, it's important to continue to grow the game, but I don't see it as a bad thing. I think I see it as you know, competition always is going to drive you to become better. And I think that that's something that Liga Amakis and, and the Mexican Federation has lacked for the past couple of years. It could also be an explanation to why we are where we are right now. But, like, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think people need to, like, just slow down and, and let the league just develop for what it is. And I think the Apple TV deal is a step in the right direction because you see it with what it is now. Like, I know they had the, um, the ESPN Plus deal at the time, which, I mean, it was honestly, as a fan, it's a better deal than what you know what it is paying for uh, the Apple TV subscription, in my opinion, because it's honestly a little cheaper. Yeah. But the blackouts and all that, like, it didn't help the people in those markets be able to you know watch their teams. And for me, I was fortunate enough where I'm not in the market, so like technically, I could still watch the fire games and be perfectly fine here. I am where I am at my house, like at home. But people in Chicago can't watch their teams, you know, things like that where sometimes those blackouts kind of overlap and you don't really know if you're in the blackout for this game or not, or if you can watch it. And I think that's one of the, the, the benefits of not having blackouts is like that whole thing where it's at, you can watch it at any point, anytime, anywhere, like, and you can support your team. And that's what you genuinely pay for. Like you pay to support your team. And I think that the league will continue to grow. It's just, people need to give it time. Like it's just, we're not, they're not at the point yet to where they can compete with those top five leagues, but they're finding their identity. And I feel like, they're taking steps in the right direction to find that, you know, that footing in, in, in their place in, in football and the world in general. Yeah, I agree. And I, 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 and I think that you said something very, very important there, which is kind of what I was alluding to, right? We need time. I think we need time. The, the foundation of fandom hasn't even been set yet, right? I think when you compare us to other leagues where you've had generations of families and fans come through that league and those clubs over the years, you know, you, you don't need a ton of marketing or a ton of storytelling to pass that fandom down to your children or your grandchildren, right? Like, you know, you, right now MLS doesn't have that. We, we yeah. kind of are maybe that first generation of really becoming um, a strong, relevant fan base that can take all the memories we're making now and pass them down to the second generation, the third generation, the fourth generation. So like you said, I don't, I don't want to talk in circles, but it, it will take, in my opinion, nothing else but time to get to where we have true relevancy in the broader kind of global soccer market. Um, yeah, but no, we'll see, sure. and I think it's super important. Um, with that said, though, um, you know, go, go, I know we're off on a little bit of a tangent in a rabbit hole there. Going back to your early days, your dad buying you FIFA. Let me ask you how how old was that? What, what were you when he got you that game? And had you already been exposed to maybe other video games? No, not at the time. But I think the earliest memory that I have is like FIFA 2005. Wow. I think I was only five. I was only five years old at the time. So nice. like. That, like, I've been playing, like, a lot of people ask me, oh, what was your first game? It's like, damn, you're old. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not that old. I'm like, yeah, like, I've, I've been playing at a young age, but no, I'm not that my, old. My, my first was 98, just to make you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, well, everyone's like, you know, like, you, like, how were you playing at age? I don't know. I was playing, like, kickoff. Like, like I'd be, it would be, like, I'd be playing friendlies with my dad sometimes, like, on the PSC. Mm -hmm. Like, we'd pop the game in. We'd be playing friendlies, like. And, like, I would always get mad because, you know, as a kid, you want to win, you know. And I think my my dad would just, like, let me win because, like, he didn't want to upset me. But, like, yeah, now it's funny because, like, nowadays, like, the we haven't played in a while. But, like, the recent times I play, I'm just, like, I'm just completely, like, like just walk, like walking all over him. It's like, I'm like, yeah, I got to Now I got to let him win, you know, every once in a while. I let him score at least to make him feel a little better. But <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's, like, yeah, like that's that's genuinely where I kind of picked it up. Like yeah. it was that, and then every single year, every every Christmas, it would be like, like oh, like you know, make your Christmas list. I always put FIFA on the list, and I always get it every year. Every Christmas, I knew I had it. Uh, so like that was one of the things where I knew that I, every single Christmas, at least, I was gonna get the new FIFA, and I would just play it throughout the year. Come home after school, play FIFA. Like 
I on, genuinely, I didn't, I didn't really care about the homework. I'd be like, now nah, put the homework <laughs> to the side. He becomes first. <laughs> That's how it, it was. does. It does for a lot of us, bro. It a hundred percent does for a lot of us, man. Um, no, no, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. I, I ironically enough, I, I, my dad, my dad also got me my first video game system, but this was much older. This was like ninety seven, ninety eight, right? And it, like FIFA wasn't the first game. I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know how long FIFA's technically been around. But um, this was a couple of years before I got my hands on FIFA. It was like a Super Nintendo, just a few one-off games, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, things like that. Yeah. And then when we had a little bit of like a taste of video games and we loved it, um, we moved to Texas when I was like seven or eight years old. So in 98, uh, I was starting to kind of get into soccer a little bit. And my dad bought me FIFA 98. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember. It's probably, it's probably been the last title with an indoor arena. Oh, uh, Really? Yeah, bro. Like the ball could never go out of bounds. You could, you could <laughs> shake it all the way up, it would come right back down. It was crazy, bro. It was crazy, crazy game. Uh, but I'm always curious as to when people, you know, kind of get introduced to what EA has been bringing them, and you see how much it's scaled up now. I mean, you know, and we'll jump into your Twitch career in a moment. But as a, as a player who wasn't even thinking about Twitch streaming yet, um, you know, what are, are there any aspects of FIFA that maybe you kind of miss? I mean, it's scaled up now. Oh right? yeah, like, fucking old yeah. There, there's a lot, stuff, but there's like a what? lot. I, I, I like. I think just how simplistic career mode used to be. Because like, oh, I remember, yeah. I remember how like simple it used to be. Like, um, when I, as I got older, I was actually like figured out how to actually properly play the game, not just like play kickoff. Because I would have career modes back when I was young. I was like seven playing career mode. I remember playing a career mode with like Barcelona. And like this was when uh, Gio Dos Santos was at Barcelona, so yeah. like, I took I took everyone. I put I put them up top, you know, like just playing, giving playing time, you know, because yeah, uh, you, you know, you you genuinely want to see, you know, all these Mexican players, you know, do well. So it's like that's what I kind of rolled with at the time. But when I was like, I think I want to say like, I want to say FIFA 12 was when I kind of started developing more into like the career mode side of it. Like I figured out, you know, like playing with different teams and like trying to develop teams and doing all that. Like this is the simplicity of it uh that and like just like the the one memory that i really like genuinely have a happy memory is like fifa 13 like playing ultimate team like i wouldn't i didn't spend a dime now we now talk about <laughs> spending hell of money like we're spending thousands of dollars here on packs you know but like yeah uh you know back then it was just like simple you know you could run with your little gold team and at the time i was i was actually i was fairly good i won like division one like it was just division five to division one at the time but I won division one with the Mexican league silver league team, but it was just a silver squad. Mm. Like, so like I was, I was pretty good at the game. And I, I remember like just playing with all these like unmeta players. The only reason they were meta is because they were fast. Like that, that's it. That's all they had was speed. And all you needed back then was pace. Everything else was secondary. And I didn't know how to do skill moves at the time. So it wasn't like some that I was really, it was just literally just run, run, run. And you'll score. Like, I figured it out. And I missed like the simplicity of how it used to be where you can have a goal team and you'll be fine. Like mm -hmm. nowadays you have promo cards, you know, every single week, every week, you know, you're, you miss a day, you miss a week of FIFA and you miss, you know, it feels like you missed a whole month's worth of content. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's, it's a lot, you know, for what it is today. So I think the simplicity of just how the game was, I really miss that. And like a lot of people will say, well, you know, content is what makes it, it makes a game fun. And it was fresh. But I think back then, like the gameplay wasn't, as like it wasn't a thing where it was tiring to play and i think nowadays it's like the gameplay is just like that like it's it's a, it almost feels like a chore to play it now than anything else and i think that's one of the things that i talked about like in my last like stream was that like something that like we kind of miss as fifa players is that simplicity of the game where you just you hop on and you you hop on to play not to start building spcs building all these packs doing upgrades like you hopped on to play and now you're hopping on to see if there's an SBC or, you know, because you have to qualify because, you know, you have to do this. It's more of a chore. Now you have to, but back then you, you didn't really have to, but you played because you enjoyed playing and you played because you love the game, not because you kind of have to. So that's, that's kind of the difference between back then and now it's like, now it feels more of a chore back then. It really felt like I was legitimately having fun with the game. And I think that's one of the biggest differences as to, I know I'm probably not the only one that feels that way, probably many people that feel that way as well so i think yeah. that's really what i miss from the game yeah i i i i agree with you i think you know certain aspects of the game nowadays there's almost so much that sometimes it can get 
stale and make it feel like you're solely there for the SBCs as opposed to actually playing the game and grinding it out and trying yeah. to be the best. You're just trying to pump out the most content. Um, that's a that's a great point, actually. But um, on top of that, kind of as a piggyback to that question, because I'm really curious, and I think it, it probably did. I think for a lot of people, it opened up. If you were only exposed to FIFA and maybe like one league or a handful of clubs growing up, I imagine, right, your knowledge of of who's involved in this game, the leagues, the clubs, all of that goes through the roof because you're, you're obviously experiencing oh, yeah. new, new clubs and career mode. So how did your how did your fandom increase by just playing more FIFA? Who who did you start to kind of flock to? To touch on your back point on that though, like I think there's there's always that like meme or that running joke going around. It's like you're you're in class, you know, you're in history class, or you know, you're, they ask you, oh, what flag is this? And it's like you already know what that is because you play FIFA, so you already know <laughs> know what that flag is. Like I think everyone can kind of relate to that. Like you you start developing more of a knowledge of like around the world, not just like I think not only just the players and the clubs, but culture wise as well. Because like when you see the league, you know the culture, like. You go to England and you you know like you know the kind of the chance that they that they kind of bring towards you know the Premier League games and not only in the Premier League just in England in general like the like the banter that they have between the fans um, and I think like playing FIFA increases that amount of knowledge in you whether it's players clubs nations like you just you genuinely have more of an understanding of what other leagues are like what other clubs are like just based on just playing this game. And, you know, maybe you really enjoyed playing with this team when you were playing, you know, head to head. And I don't know, you let's say you picked Chelsea and you weren't a fan of Chelsea before, but you really enjoyed using Chelsea. So now you're a Chelsea fan. Like, I know that that's one of the things that's happened because it happened to one of my friends. Like, he didn't know anything about football, started playing FIFA, picked a team, really enjoyed playing with that team. And now he's a fan of that team. So, like, it, yeah. I know it's and I know it happens. And I think that's one of the things that FIFA has kind of brought on to um to not only to to the US but I think in the world in general like it exposes you to many different leagues so like you're not only stuck in a box where you only know Liga Mekis or you only know MLS like now you know about the Premier League now you know about you know now you know about the uh, the Eredivisie you know you know all about all these other leagues like that you're exposed to because of this game and I don't think I think without this game you wouldn't necessarily be exposed to that so I think it it has helped out a lot when it comes to developing the game and just in the world of football in general yeah, no, I, that 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 meme you mentioned right at the beginning, right? Like you you just kind of knew countries or maybe just just parts of the world that you're like, dude, did, were you like a geography nut? Like, nah, man, yeah, I, yeah, I played a lot of FIFA, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of FIFA, um, but yeah, bro, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It's kind of crazy when you think about the the mental like gates that FIFA's kind of opened up or pathways that it's opened up for you. Um, but you know, just to kind of um, go back to that question, right, or the second part of that question, like which. You know, you you were exposed to Liga MX a lot coming up as a kid. Your family obviously was, you know, massive Leon supporters. But were they also supporting other leagues overseas, or did you kind of build up some of that on your own through FIFA? No, I built that. I built that up on my own because, like, at the time, um, and this is how I actually became a United fan. Was at the time I was watching a lot of Chivas, and mm -hmm. Chicharito was, you know, he was coming up. Obviously, I, I didn't really pay attention in 05 when he won the U seventeen World Cup, so I didn't know that he would have potentially been involved in that. So I didn't know any of that. Like my dad did, but it wasn't like something that like I was extremely exposed to, you know, I know Vela eventually went to Arsenal at the time because yep. at the, at, at the back end of that world cup, you know, everyone just kind of blew up because of that. Yep. But Chicharito was one of those players that kind of like took a while to, you know, kind of grow into. So I think it was like before he went, I think that was that friendly when United played Chivas mm. where, I mean, I knew about Chicharito before and I really like supported him. So I found out, oh, there's this Mexican playing in, 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 you know, Manchester United. And I know I knew Manchester United was a big club, but I didn't know how massive it was. So I was like, oh, Chirito went over there. Oh, I'll just, you know, follow him. So I decided to support United. And that's kind of where my side of the United fandom kind of came into was because of that. And it was more or less like kind of developed. After I did that, like I started watching them a bit more and I just enjoyed it. You know, like, you know, Ferguson at the time being one of the best, honestly, in my opinion, one of the best managers to ever, ever you know, yeah. coach in the game. Like that, that man has brought a lot of players through, and you just see it. That as the essence of what United was, and the thing, kind of thing that we're missing now, is that like we just don't have that essence. I think we're starting to rebuild it now, but like for for multiple years, we we've, we've just been missing that essence of like the guy that built this club is no longer here, trying to fill that void. And I think the reason why that all started was because. It was honestly because of Liga Mekis. After that, 
you know, I started paying attention a little bit more to other leagues and that's how I became like a fan of um, other teams as well as, or not even like a fan, but just like had a, you know, a special, like a soft spot for them because like either it was some FIFA related or something, something along those lines, but it, it and honestly helped me like get exposed to other leagues. And it wasn't like something that my family did exactly. It was more something that I just kind of discovered myself. Yeah. hundred percent, bro. And where does the, uh, where does the, the, the Messi or the Barcelona passion come from? You you would think I support Barca, but the reason why I have these up is just because I, I have I honestly have I don't even know where I put them, but I when I moved Probably into this office, of yeah, I have a bunch of like I have a Ronaldo print, I have a Griezmann print, I have like multiple things. I think even up here I have a Messi and Ronaldo one up top. So like people always ask me, oh, you you got to be a Messi fan? It's like no, like I honestly support them both. Like I don't have a I don't have one or the other. And honestly, like I support Madrid, and you wouldn't think of it because of like what I have up on my wall, but like. I, I like I just have a massive respect of like everything that he built and one of the things was like I also like I did grow up like on Barcelona because like like some sometimes my dad would have on when the classicals were on and they would always support Barca but like it wasn't something that were like they massively supported it they just like you know they had a special spot like a special spot for them yeah and it wasn't like something that I kind of grew into I grew into Madrid a little bit after um but like as like I said you would think that because of these, I, I would support Barca, but I don't like. So I see the opposite. <laughs> so yeah. people always question me on that. They're like, "Why do you have them up there?" It's like, "Nah, I just have a massive respect for Messi because he was one of the, also one of the players that I grew up on a lot, and he was one of the players that I really respected." And yeah. I, when I was younger, like, and I was talking to the, I was talking about this to my dad like last week. I was like, "When I was younger, like, I, I I supported Messi. I thought Messi was you know better and all this, but as I got older, I started to appreciate Ronaldo a lot more because." You just I, I found out a little bit more about his story and just how he is as a person and why maybe he is how he is. Yeah. And I respect that a lot just because of yeah. the hard work that he put in to become the player that he is. Because Messi was kind of gifted all the opportunities. Ronaldo had to work his way into it. So like to see two players like that, and I don't honestly, like I know Mbappe and Holland are coming up or whatever, but I don't think we're generationally, I don't think we're ever gonna see two players head to head like that in their prime of their careers going that at it like that ever again. Like yeah. we we are one of the luckiest generations because we've got to see, you know, the blow up of them. You know, obviously Messi winning the 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 World Cup th uh, this past year, but you know, just just the whole like competition. And I, like you see it now. I think I think you might also feel the same way. But like the classicals aren't the same without Messi and Ronaldo. Like the the animosity just it was all involved in like that. The whole like the rivalry, how everyone was, you know, how chippy those games used to be. It's not the same anymore. And it doesn't feel the same. I don't know. Maybe it's just me that feels that way, but it just doesn't feel the same. Like, no, it no, just doesn't. No, no. I, I look, bro, I'll, I'll agree with you hundred um, percent. Now I will say, here's the one um, issue that I have with most people. Most people bring that argument up is that I believe it wasn't solely Messi and Ronaldo that made that like a chip. No, player, I don't think right? it was, I, but it helped. I honestly, I think it helped a yeah. lot because they brought in a lot of fans because they both personally have a lot of fans and I think, you know, Ramos's personality, Pepe's personality, and then you had, you know, the leadership of, of, of Puyo and, and all those guys. And it's like Pep versus Mourinho. Yeah. Like it was yeah. it was so much. And so by many the way, things. that was that was the height of it all. Like yeah. Yeah, I, said, I had was. never seen a rivalry that had translated to like managers off the pitch outside of maybe um like you mentioned Sir Alex Ferguson, right? Sir Alex Ferguson and, and Arsene Wenger. To yeah. me, I don't care what anybody says. Manchester United Arsenal, to me, in my opinion, is the greatest rivalry in the in Premier League's history. I think that the styles of play, the managerial tactics, the on the pitch players, the two captains, Vieira and Keane, yeah. like all of it, man, was just crazy, crazy over the top, just passion. I, and I would say the same thing for what I consider that prime Barca Real Madrid era, where you you would you can confidently say, at least I will confidently say. The two best teams in the world were both located in Spain, had all the superstars, had the two biggest global icons on the planet, and it delivered every single time. Every single time. time, yeah. Every single time. Yeah. But, and this is why I say it's not just them or even those personalities that you mentioned outside of those guys, it was even also like before that, right? Like, I remember, you know, and it's it's all the storylines, you know, Ronaldo playing for, you know, R9 Ronaldo playing for Barca once upon a time, then going to Real Madrid. Luis yeah, Figo, Figo doing, as well. Doing the, in my opinion, impossible and like making a move directly from Barcelona to Real Madrid. Um, like all of the bad blood that was spilled, like you, it was like a, a, a telenovela. Like it was just like yeah, a soap yeah. opera, man. Like, like you, you couldn't find those storylines anywhere else. And then now you look at it and it's like, 
they're missing more than just Messi and Ronaldo. They're really missing those players. I think Gavi can be one of those players for Barcelona as years go on. Like he's just yeah, you see it now. Well. You see it now. He's been getting under getting <laughs> a lot of skin. <laughs> yeah, he's even this last it. one. Yeah. yeah, man, he's ready for it. He's always there. He, he he doesn't shy away from anything. But we need more players on on like that on both sides, right? Like I think that the, the I think Vinny's starting to become goal. that way too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to Vinny, that way Vinny, too. Like, that's what I'm saying, right? When they were about to kind of get into it in this last yeah. classical, like like I want, in all honesty, like regardless of what the score is, I want more of that. I want more of that. I like my badge, my club is just better than yours, and I'm gonna prove it. Every and you know, and you know, I think as a, as as a fan too, you kind of you feel like the players properly care. You yeah. know, they care as much as you do. And that, like, as a fan, you're like, I know that these guys are putting in the effort. You know, you don't feel like there's nothing, that, like everything's being left out on the pitch. And so, like, you see them get upset, and you're like, you know that they properly care. Like, there's yeah. no like, and I think that as any fan of any sport or, or you know anything, you just want you want the players to care as much as you do. And I think 100%. that that's one of the things that. I think as a fan, when it comes to rivalries, sometimes you see it now where it's like you Liverpool United. It's just not the same as it used to be. Like, because you see that kind of like you, you kind of feel like people, like the players just don't genuinely get up for those games. And back then, like players would because like there's a massive rivalry and people knew what that meant. And I think feel like it's kind of dying out nowadays. But I don't know if that's just like a generational thing or if that's just like, you know, one of those things where. You it, don't. it could be. It could be. I think United City has like strong long term potential. Yeah. Um, in ways that it never was. Right. I feel like sometimes when certain chapters close, uh, other ones kind of open. And I feel like City United can be a massive, massive thing if United kind of gets, uh, you know, some of the. If we get back into contention, and, just contention in general. Yeah, exactly. But you guys have already proven you can beat City even with the team that you have, right? So if yeah. United gets a little bit better, it's going to be really interesting to see how that develops over time because it's just been nothing but City for the last eight or ten years. So, yeah. you know, it's like, it's just, I don't know. I think everything is evolving like you're mentioning. But I, with that said, I'm really hoping that we can still see, the next generations of fans can still see similar storylines uh, based on the ones that like we grew up on, right? And it, it made yeah. following the game abroad. So, so damn interesting. And what's crazy is that, like, for a lot of us, we couldn't even talk about it with, like, our friend groups that much, right? Because, like, people didn't follow it, right? Like, no, I yeah. my, my friends didn't know what the hell Barcelona or El Clasico was. They just knew I was, like, and I grew up kind of in a, a rural area here in Texas. The, you know, American football reigns supreme out here. Yeah, and, like, yeah. The Cowboys or everything. That's cool, what, whatnot. But, but when I mentioned, oh, like, what am I doing this weekend? I'm watching El Clasico. I'm glued to my seat. I'm locked in for this game. And they had no idea what I was talking about. So. Yeah, I think that's one of the one of the things is, a, is when we were talking about, like, just childhood-wise and how you grew up on it, like, at least for me, it wasn't – there wasn't – there's not many people here that are, like – and that's why I said it, like, you know, football's not a big thing here because I just never was exposed to it. I feel like I was one of the only people that actually watched it. But, like yeah. – you know, you didn't have – there wasn't people that you could be like, oh, like, I can go over to your house and like, let's watch this game together. And now it's like you have that now because I think the sport is just developing as what it is now. And I think, like, younger – you know, younger kids playing the game get exposed to it. Now they know about FIFA. Now they're exposed to more than I think potentially we were at any point, you know, at the beginning when the league was starting to grow, you know, yeah. just in general. Yeah, I agree, so I get where man. you're coming from. Yeah, it's a different ball game that we play over here, man. Sometimes you just wish, like, man, if I could have like grown up, I don't know, man, the UK or in Spain, or yeah, anything. just 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 to be immersed in it, man, it would have been, uh, you know, taking my fam to a whole new level. But either way, I'm I, I'm grateful nonetheless. Um, all right, man. Well, we talked a lot about you know the early days of your fandom, how that scaled up over time. When did streaming and wanting to create content the motive because that to me that's something that you think on for at least a little bit right it's like i gotta be motivated to try to put myself out there create some content uh maybe you know you're still uh, again I, I know my parents from my generation didn't even know what streaming was I'm trying to get them to buy into the fact that i i was a person who never really streamed coming up but would watch a lot of people play video mm -hmm. games um this was right around the time that twitch got acquired by amazon and so it was really kind of starting to kind of get bigger and bigger so what what was it for you? What brought you into the streaming game? I guess my my earliest my earliest memories would have been like I think I was like fifteen or sixteen at the time, and I would just stream off like my PS4. But I wasn't mm -hmm. like streaming to like I wasn't streaming to like a big like audience. I don't think I even really got views or like jumped up anywhere with it. But like I was just streaming to like or I, I was, it was either streaming. I was streaming on YouTube. I think at the time, like I was just like taking those clips and like those vod, those little vods would save. So I would take those little VODs and then I would like grab my dad's Mac and I would like just start like editing little like things on like iMovie. 
and like i started doing that but i, I kind of just left it for what it was and like my earliest memories was like just like watching on youtube i think it was like you know ksi i think that was the first that was my first <laughs> yes. uh that was the first exposure to, to the kind of like the whole like youtube thing like the whole that whole side of it and then like i found like a9 skills and like that was someone that i really grew up on so like watching him for a while like i jumped over to twitch and i was like this is like early early days like 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 back when like before i think it was like Justin TV days, like back Bro, then, Justin like TV was yeah, alive. yeah, that was a whole like. It be, I, <laughs> that's why I feel old because like I I've, I've been in the space for a while, but like I mean it, it but it, I've gone through like little pivots where like I dropped it and then I came back to it and then I dropped yeah. it because I'd just be watching YouTube. So like when when Skills was on 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 Twitch, I would hop on over on Twitch and I would uh, I'd be like doing my homework, watching Skills is like stream in the background, and like I'd be doing homework and stuff like that. So like. That's kind of where I got introduced into the whole Twitch side of it. And then a couple years down the line, like I got out of high school, I graduated. Um, I started working and it wasn't really like something like that I really thought of like doing. Um, I think I talked about it to like my cousin like one time, but like we didn't really like, I didn't really get into the gist of it. So then eventually like uh, TikTok like popped up and then I, I got this, like I kept seeing like this girl and I was like, who is this? It was, it was Casey. Like, Casey was one of the people that kept like popping her Twitter, TikTok kept popping up. And I was like, oh, like I'll just check, I'll check out one of her streams one day. So I checked out one of her streams one day and like I popped in there and I said, what's up? And like it kind of felt like they, they try to make everyone feel like welcome. Mm -hmm. And I remember like her, you know, I'm a mod for her now, but like and we're, we're, we're good friends now. But like at the time, like it was like her, you know, her main mod, Rain, she's like, he's a good friend of mine now too. Like he was like really like talkative and chatting. He was like, you know, like trying to get everyone involved. And I'm like, okay this seems like a cool little vibe so i just like hung out in there and like i would like i would hang out in there for like an hour or two and then i like dip out and I'd go to bed but like yeah you know i started hanging out in there more and more and then it wasn't until like i got more like kind of like became more friends with the, with that community and kind of just kind of like involved in there that i was like you know i would kind of like to like build something like on this myself because i i don't feel like i'm like terrible at the game like, i feel like i could actually like play the game a little bit yeah and i told my cousin like oh yeah i think i might start streaming like i might just start like buying stuff and he was like Nah, like you always say you're gonna do it and you never do it. And I kind of and I I took that personally, dude. I took that personally. I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna actually do it. So I I, I spent the money, I bought a PC, I bought you know my monitors. I had my PS5 at the time. I already like I already had that. So like I bought my Elgato. I bought everything. Like spent a lot of money. And I was like, I already spent this money, so now I have to do it. Like yeah. there's no point in spending all this money. Like now I'm committed. So I started like I, I started like streaming and like. Rain was one of the people that like hopped over and like he was like really nice and he like helped me out a lot at the beginning and then like Honda came into the mix too like he was like trying to help me out and I, I think one of my first streams was actually like a tournament like I, I, I prepared this like tournament like this like I've always been doing things like this like things like this has always like popped up like so I was I, I prepared like a tournament and like I didn't really know many people other outside of that community mm -hmm. like within just casing like obviously skills but like I didn't know anyone like outside the community so I got introduced to other people by you know, by Rain and by and by Honda, that's kind of that was kind of my way in. So like they introduced me into other people. So I started to, like I did my tournament and like I think like twelve people signed up for it. And like we did this whole tournament, like we made this whole big deal. That was my first ever stream. And like after that, I just kind of just continued to grow from there. And like I started to like pop into more and more people's chats as I found out about more and more people. So I just became like started becoming friends with a lot of people. That's why like a lot of people see me everywhere. Like a lot of people know me. They might not know me exactly because I stream, but they know me because I know of a certain person or I'm good friends with someone else. And like everyone just like I'm like it's 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 like an awkward feeling because like I I'm known, but like I'm not known for my streaming. Like I'm just known for <laughs> someone that's around and that's like, yeah, like I've, I've been everywhere. So like I'm good friends with a lot of people in the NA community as well. Like, oh, I know a lot of people as well. And like I think like from having that first initial relationship, like that's one of the things like I'm I'm mostly grateful for meeting Casey because like I've been able to like from meeting her, I met so many people that I've they just consider like just genuinely consider like really, really good friends. And like that was like my first like stop. So like I will always be grateful to her towards her. Like there's a lot of the things that like I've been able to develop it, like throughout like just being from that community and like, you know, the amount of people I know now is just it's, it was like one of the things where it's like I didn't originally think about streaming, but then I it kind of got an itch and it just developed for what it is now. So it's kind of where that's that's how I started streaming, really. 
Bro, that's was crazy, that? man. It's just one streamer, right? Like one, one yeah. person does it for you. They bring you into this world you don't really know anything about. And then before you know it, man, you're locked in and you're just, you're here for all of it. And and look, for, for anybody who hasn't, and there's still a lot of people, Twitch is massive, right? But, you know, from where it was in the Justin TV days, to like where it is now, it's become very massive. But there's still so many people who haven't heard of Twitch. So if you haven't, yeah. I mean, go check it out. Um, You know, it's, I, I, people call it a streaming app, but I, I very much consider it a social network. And it's for the reasons that you just mentioned. Um. So with that said, um, if you haven't seen Shy Casey, uh, or, or I don't, is she still going Shy Casey? Um, yeah, yeah. I know she was a, like she was working for the fire, and then like she's not a, a fire. Uh, she is a fire supporter, but I guess she's not really working directly with them. No, anymore. no, she's, she's not. She's, she's, she's not with them now. anymore. Yeah, no, she's she's huge. And when I first met her, she was not. You know, she was just starting out as well. I think she had only been streaming for like about a year. So mm-hmm. I'd met her like no before a year. So I'd met her like just a little bit shortly before. So I it, I think it. It was probably like a good it was it was a good like time because like it wasn't like she was too big, but it wasn't like, you know, like she was like small either. Like she was she was known in the community and it was mm-hmm. like, you know, one of the I think what the reason why we like started to become more friends was because one time she was like, Yeah, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a GTA playlist. Like, does anyone have any playlists? And I remember like back in like the GTA days, like I used to play a lot of playlists with my cousins. I still had those saves. I was like, yeah, I, I have a couple. And she was like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, just, uh, like, we should play, like, you should invite me, like, we can play them. So, like, we started playing with the community. That's kind of how I got, that was my way in, you know, <laughs> in a way, like, that was my way in. So that that's when I started to become friends. And now, like, we're really good friends. And, like, you know, I'm I'm a mod in there now, which, like, originally like, I wasn't. Like, it's crazy because, like, it's been like, two years since I started streaming. And in those two years, I've met some of the people that I genuinely consider one of my, like, some of my best friends and, like, I've met up with these people, like we've hung out, like just a lot of, like just a lot of support just from that end. And then it's crazy to me when I look back at it, because it's like one thing expanded into a lot. So it's like, it's crazy, but it, it it's nice. You know, I think it's one of those things where as a streamer, and I think I'm not the only one that probably feels that way. It's like, you know, just the amount of support, you'll be surprised. Like how many, like I rarely get hate. And that's one of the things too. Like a lot of people say like, oh yeah, like, there's a lot of hate when you get, when you do it. It's, I don't genuinely get that much hate. And I don't know if it's a thing because I'm just like friends with a lot of people or like, I just, could, I just I mean, don't it, see it. It could it. also be the game, right? I mean, yeah. um, and, and not that FIFA streamers like don't get hate. I'm sure there are some that do. Personalities maybe play into it as well yeah. for the content creator. But I've uh, I, I've been on Twitch long enough to know that, yeah, certain communities are, are different. Um, and that's, that's one of the questions I actually had for you. I don't know. Like, well, one, have you ever thought about streaming something other than FIFA? And then... Um, well, let's, let's just stick with that for now. I've got I a, a backup question on top of that. Um, So, like, for what I did at the beginning was I would play FIFA, but, like, my goal has never just been to play FIFA. I think, like, the sustainability of playing FIFA can only get you so far. And I think that's why I've been dabbling in doing a lot of different things because, like, from just playing FIFA, I I think last year, it was, yeah, it's been a year. But mm-hmm. I did this whole like Nations League thing and I made it like a whole I made a whole thing where it was a lot of content creators. We were doing this, you know, Nations League thing. So essentially all it was was like we'd all pick a nation, we'd all be on a wheel, you know, whatever's name pop up. Only two nations could be taken by two different people once those nations were done, you know, they were out. But it was a whole process of like, you know, you play all these rival games, you build your you know, you start off with the basic goal team, but you have one meta player, and you start off with this basic goal team, you get your wins. You get you earn coins to develop to continue building on your team and stuff like that. So like, I had this whole I made this whole idea while I was at work. Like I was at work thinking about content creating, and I was like, okay, so how, what can I do to like make the you know kind of switch things up so it's like interesting for people to watch? And you know, I got a lot of people on board. I started making people player cards. I did this whole promo thing. Like because of because of streaming, I've also gotten better at Photoshop too. And like, that's something I did in high school as well. But I took like the not- little knowledge that I had from high school and I applied it and I've gotten better at it. So like I was able to make thumbnails. And I've, that's one of the things I've always prided myself on is like I've been able to do my own thumbnails, like my own graphics, all of that. Like I've been able to do it myself. Like, yeah, sometimes I think it's nice to have other people that do it for you because you just generally don't have all the time in the world to do everything. Yeah. But like it's one of the things where I, I've taken pride in myself that I've always attempted to do my own thing. And it's one of the things where it's like not only FIFA wise, but like I've also like. I started introducing watch parties as well. So like any big game that we used to watch. So I used to watch a lot of uh, the Mexico games and the gold cup. We did that. We did uh nation's league watch alongs. We did, what else did we do? We did a bunch of United games. We did fire games as well. So like 
just in general, like doing watch alongs and like getting people involved and doing this whole community thing. Like I did, a, I did this really big watch along where there's a bunch of content creators came through. We were all watching the Mexico USA game. Like we were just all on discord, like all like in on stream, like streaming the game, you know, or not streaming the game, but just like everyone in discord was just like talking and just having different points and different perspectives. Cause I think that's one of the nicest things that you can get with doing stuff like that. Like not only do you see, you know, football, everyone sees football it from a different perspective. Like you might have a different view on the game than someone else. So I think it helps as for, you know, viewers to get, you know, a different perspective from different people. And you can understand why people maybe see the game in, in one way or another. And I think that's one of the things that I've always kind of strived to do was not only do FIFA content, but get outside of that and start doing more like IRL, like football content in general. And I think that's one of the things where that's why I'm kind of like always dipping my hand into different little projects is because <laughs> I don't want to be so linear in one thing. I want to be able to expand myself and do multiple different things. I think that's just the end goal for me too with the, this kind of creation is just not only playing FIFA, but doing other things outside of it that are football related. Yeah, absolutely. Really? And speaking of doing things outside, right? Uh, IRL that are football related, bro, you have this, uh, you have this footy summer project. Um, I, I think it's one of the, like, honestly, when you think about like what the side men were able to do with their charity match overseas and, what certain even outside of the world of like you know youtubers or, or twitch content creation where we've seen other charity like events go on and how big some of these can get i think the opportunity to blend content creators with professionals in the in the, in the pro football or pro soccer world um uh, and making you know the content and the game itself relatable in ways that we just haven't been able to do before the age of the internet all of that's super interesting to me which is why when i saw you you know, you mentioned putting your hands in different pots and building things that other people just aren't doing. When I saw you trying to work on this and build this thing out from scratch, I personally was super intrigued. Um, but I think, you know, there's probably a fair amount of our audience who hasn't really heard of Footy Summer just yet. So if you don't mind, man, just a brief description of what you're trying to put together there and maybe kind of how far you are along with it. Yeah. So essentially, like, Footy Summer is one of those things that, again, like, it, it just happened to happen on, like, it was a random... I, I wasn't streaming myself, but it was... It was one of my friends that was streaming at the time. And he was like, I think I just brought it up to him. I was like, you know, like, we should do a charity event, like a charity match. And they're like, yeah, like, we started going back and forth with, like, people, like, you know, creators that we think that would get, you know, would do it. And like, nah, do you think they would do it? And like, yeah, no. And, like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to chuck up a tweet and we'll see what happens. That tweet ended up blowing up because I think we had the likes of you and Jimmy Conrad, like, reply to that tweet. Like, we had big people reply to that tweet. Bugs, you know, all these other big content creators started replying to this tweet and i think the, the thing for me always was it's like everyone's always and I, I know like skills talked about it years ago like like we had this niche here where we don't have that you know and like it would be cool to develop but i just never saw anyone like try to put the effort to do it and i was yeah. like you know if anyone's gonna do it what's the difference if i do it or if anyone else does it i don't think it really matters i just think it needs to get done and i yeah. think that was one of the that was the intention behind it but the tweet in itself was just like just to see a rough estimate on who would be interested in doing it. And then once we got that feedback, I kind of went back to like, you know, like other people that I know, like all my other friends that content create that we just talk every day in discord kind of went back on it. And we're like, okay, maybe we can do this. And like, we started talking a little bit more. And I think you, you, you had mentioned that you wanted to help out. And that was one of the things that for me was like, that's a big help because I think when you're developing something like this, you know, I can only do and get myself so far. So I'm not the, I, I know that I'm not the only person that, needs to work on this or that I can't do this by myself. So yeah. it was one of the things where we needed to build like some sort of team or get it some a group together to be able to develop the the whole concept of it. And like the whole concept, like how everything's going to work and how everything's going to look like is just, honestly, it's a, it's a take and an inspiration from a little bit of what the side men are doing a little bit of what MLS all-star weekend looks like. It's just, it's a combination of a lot of the things where I think that we can combine, you know, what is, perfect was just like you know the world of content creators and you know how how massive sometimes uh or some fan bases are like not fan bases but just communities are um in general here in the u.s and i know we're all spread out so yeah. i think the most difficult thing is trying to find a perfect place to do it at and i think uh like we were just all kind of like talking about you know where would be a good place to kind of centralize to where everyone kind of get to where it's not you know so complicated so we, we came up with the idea of going to austin and that was one of the things where we just discussed and we, you know, we're like, I don't know. If, I don't know if Austin will like take, you know, take a thing. And we're like, I mean, it's always going to be, you know, if you don't ask. So like, I think that's one of the things he told me is like, yeah, you're right. So might as well just ask. And like, 
we asked about him and you know they they jumped on board they really enjoyed the the idea and you know right now we're in talks of trying to find a date for for a specific date for it but they are willing to like help and put the venue through um and like try to help us out with that and i think that's one of the nicest things too it's like you know you got to be appreciative towards that because it's something that they're probably not familiar with they probably haven't seen before and to put in trust to some you know some streamers that you know you genuinely don't know you know nothing about them to put that amount of trust to like let them use your facilities and you know let them use your space you know for this event that's obviously going to help out multiple communities i think that's one of the things that like i've always tried to do as well it's like not only like you know try to develop myself and like grow myself as a as a content creator as an individual but it's also like giving back to the people that i feel like do deserve you know that sort of um uh, respect too because like i feel like you get the you get the support you get you know you you grow yourself to a certain level but you also have to i feel like it's also a responsibility in my opinion to like give back you know to the communities uh that have helped you develop and get you to the, to the place that you are you know and i think that's one of the things where i'm trying to like not only keep it in Austin and try to go to like different markets in like different, you know, places around the U S because I feel like every single community can benefit from it. And it's one of those things where it's like, I think working together allows us to be able to bring something that I feel like has been missing here for a long, long time. And I know the side men have been doing it for a while. So I think it's, it's, it's about time that we do it here, you know, and maybe yeah. we get some of those names from, you know, from the UK to hop over here and, you know, we can do something with that, but we'll see where everything's at, you know, in a couple of years, I just want to make sure that this, this first one goes well enough so where, you know, we have something to where if we go to a different market or a different team, be like, hey, can we use your facilities? Like we have this already as a backing, like as proof, you know, we've done this once already. You know, we, this is proven to work. Like, are you guys willing to work with us so that we can, you know, help out your, your community as well? But, you know, continue to make this a bigger and bigger thing every year. So that's kind of where we're at with that whole thing. I love that, bro. That's awesome. Um, and look, man, I think uh, I think you 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 you, know, I mean, you put it in words I couldn't put it in myself as far as the summary goes, and you know the mission of what you guys are trying to accomplish. But I also think Austin's the perfect city for it. I mean, not just the fact that like you have a massive soccer market, right? Uh, I mean, massive. You look at how quickly Austin FC's fan base has grown just yeah. through the support of, of the city of Austin. But then on top of that, right, Austin has become this massive hub for not just FIFA content creators, but content creators in general, right? YouTubers, Twitch streamers, everybody in between. So I think- Yeah, a lot of people are moving to Texas. Yeah, <laughs> that's, <man. laughs> that's the case. Yeah, I know. They're, everybody's migrating over. But like, you know, it's it's become kind of this perfect storm for you guys to really bring this to life. And like you mentioned before, right? Prove out the concept in a way that allows you to unlock other markets, other opportunities, and make this bigger than- maybe you ever imagine. I think it's awesome. So anyway, um, if anybody wants to uh, wants to find out a little bit more, how can they find out more about Footy Summer? Uh, well, we have there's we have our we have our Twitter, which is uh, just Footy Summer. I think I think it's a Footy Summer. Um, but we have our Twitter where we have signups if people are interested to whether you're a content creator, or you're just someone that wants to come through and watch or you you're willing to volunteer, which is something that we're also looking for too. is, it, you know, because it's something that we can't take care of ourselves because we're I think in general, we're just going to be busy doing our own thing. So like, we're also going to need people to volunteer. So if you're willing to volunteer, that's somewhere where we have a sign up on there and you can sign up and we'll let you in for free. And, you know, you can, we'll help you out. We'll give you, you know, food and stuff like that. So as long as you're willing to help in and put in the time to help us out, like we'll, we'll take care of you, stuff like that. So love that. Love that, bro. So yeah, guys, uh, and worst case scenario, right? Head to John's uh, Twitter profile. He's got a bunch of posts there regarding footy summer and everything they're, they're working on as they prepare for that event in the summer 2023. Um, before we wrap up, John, I kind of have one more question. because I think that your journey is going to be inspiring to more than a few fans who maybe have an itch to go down that same rabbit hole you went down with, you know, community building, content creation, everything in between. Is there a piece of advice you would give to someone who is maybe an aspiring content creator or just a footy fan who's thought about putting themselves on the internet, but just maybe has been too nervous or afraid to do so? I think that I know that there's always going to be that fear, that sense of fear where you're like, you don't know how people are going to react or how, you know, or, you know, if you're going to grow fast enough. And I think that's one of the fears I think everyone has kind of when you start out, it's like, do people really care about my content? Like, is it worth it? But honestly, it's worth it. Like the amount of people that you meet along the way, I think is what makes it worth it because uh, I think you just have to continue pushing forward. And if it's something that you really want to do, I think you should take a chance on it because I think for me, it wasn't something where I knew it was going to become this big thing. Now it kind of has become the thing. And I, I don't, I don't see myself as a big creator because I know I'm not yet. Um, but I do also feel like 
it is one of those things where it's it's a nice thing to have because you have this backing of a lot of people and you know that you're supported by a lot of people. So, you know, as in life, you're going to have issues, you have things going on. And sometimes you, you genuinely meet like some really good friends and people that you can really trust. And I think having that, you know, sense of, you know, you're not sure if, you're, if this is cut off for you, just give it a chance. And if you feel like it's not, then, you know, it's fine. You, there's no, there's no right or wrong way about going about it. It's just like, I think you just have to give yourself the opportunity to try it out and just try to make it something where you feel like, you know, it, it can be for you. And if it's not, well, then at least you tried it, you know, like yeah. there's, there's no wrong way of going about it. So I think that's one of the, one of the advices that I would get. One of the things that I would give is just be yourself. Like I think people take, take to that sort of, you know, personality of how you are as a person, you know, I think you can't really fake trying to be someone else. So like, don't try to be like, you know, the, you know, like a nine skills or anyone else, like, just be yourself and people will gravitate towards you and people, you know, people genuinely gravitate towards people that they feel are, are, you know, are genuine. And that's one of the things I think I look for when I'm also like on Twitch, just looking for new people or just meeting new people is, you know, how genuine they are and how, you know, they are as a person and what their personality is like. Just be yourself. People will take to you and eventually, you know, you'll get to where you want to be. But I think that's honestly the best advice that I can give to someone that's inspiring to either content create or just be on Twitch in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a fantastic way to end this episode, man. I love it. Um, look, guys, for anybody who's around to the very end, I really appreciate you. Um, I'm going to link John's Twitch channel as well as all of his socials down in the description notes below. Go check those out. Go drop, drop him a follow. Go check out his channel. I think there's a lot going on. And then even past that, past what goes on on screen, there's a ton he's working on outside of that with a footy summer and other projects in between. So again, go check all of those things out. Uh, John, seriously, man, thank you so much for hopping on the show today. I really appreciate it. I think your story is going to be inspiring and if all else fails entertaining right for whoever watches this video <laughs> so thanks again man i hope we get to do more of these in the future um uh, and again yeah, no, for sure absolutely brother absolutely and for anyone who t- tuned in stuck around to the very end of the episode really appreciate you and if you haven't done so already like the video down below subscribe to the channel we're on this mission here at goals tv of growing a true culture around soccer or the beautiful game here in the states and in north america from everybody here at box to box my name is jose Tejas. thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you next time